Hi everyone and welcome to the final video in the new Passport Setup Guide series. In this video I'm going to show you how to connect Passport with Envoy, verify a receive address, then receive a transaction and finally we'll be sending a transaction as well using both Passport and Envoy. I'll also give you a brief tour of Envoy's features to ensure that you can get the most out of it when paired with Passport. Okay, so let's get started. So Envoy's given us some brief instructions there uh, and over on Passport, I'm just gonna press continue. Passport now says, next, scan the QR code on the following screen into Envoy. And Passport is now showing an animated QR code with the information required for Envoy. So over on Envoy, I'm just gonna press get started. Read those brief instructions, basically just telling us that we're gonna use Envoy to scan the animated QR code that Passport is displaying. I'm gonna press continue again. And that's gonna open our camera on Envoy and I'm just gonna scan the QR code Passport is displaying. And there we go, we've got a successful connection information message. And we now have the option, we can either skip straight to the home screen or the more advisable route is to validate a receive address. So clicking continue on passports, it now says, next let's check that the wallet is connected successfully. Over on Envoy, I'm just gonna tap on validate receive address and Envoy is then going to show us a, one of the receiving addresses from our Passport wallet. And what we're going to do is scan that with Passport so that it can verify that Envoy is displaying the correct address, which will confirm that the connection was successful. So over on Passport, I'm just going to press continue. That's going to open the screen on Passport and I'm just going to scan the QR code from Envoy. And there we go, after a really brief search, Passport has confirmed that, that, that the address that Envoy is displaying is actually one that belongs to Passport, so we can be sure that the connection works successfully. Passport confirms that the connection is complete. And there we are at the Passport home screen. If of course you did get a unsuccessful verification on the address, uh, you can uh, of course contact support directly from Envoy. Otherwise you can press continue. And there we go on Envoy, you can see that we have added our passport. We can see the device is listed there. And if we head over to the accounts tab, there is our first account, which is empty of course, waiting to receive some Bitcoin. Okay, to receive Bitcoin could not be simpler using Passport and Envoy. And in actual fact, we don't really need to interact with Passport at this stage. Uh, we can do the receive part of the transaction purely from Envoy. So once we're inside the selected account that we've just paired, I'm just gonna tap receive and Envoy is gonna display a QR code and the text version of one of our receive addresses. Now, if I was to go back out of that screen and then tap receive again, you will notice that Envoy will display a completely different receive address, even though we didn't actually use or send any funds into the previous address. Now this is by design. Envoy does this automatically as a privacy best practice, so that it makes it much more difficult for anybody to reuse addresses, which can be detrimental to your privacy when interacting with Bitcoin. So all we need to do to receive to the address on screen is to share that with the person or the wallet that is sending to us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. So I've just hit send from the wallet that I'm spending from into my passport wallet that we can see on screen. So I'm just gonna press okay to go back to the account screen. And within a couple of seconds, there we go, straight away, um, we can see the pending transaction, which is awaiting confirmation. Once that has a confirmation, it's been processed by the Bitcoin network, I'll come back and show you how to spend those funds. Okay, so a little bit of time has now passed and the Bitcoin network has confirmed our transaction, so we are ready to spend. So just a quick recap of the architecture here. 
we have Envoy that is monitoring all of the addresses uh, controlled by Passport. Envoy is about to propose a spend transaction which it cannot authorize. Uh, that's where Passport comes in. So Passport is going to read the transaction information that Envoy proposes. Once Passport confirms that it's happy with all the details, Passport will authorize it and it will then pass the signed transaction back across to Envoy so that Envoy can broadcast it to the wider Bitcoin network. So let's get started with that. So with the account open, I'm just going to press send. Now here we need to populate the address at the top. Now you can either open the QR code scanner or what I'm going to do is paste an address that I have copied to my clipboard on my phone. And then I'm going to enter the amount that I want to spend so I can just manually type in how much I want to spend. Or in this instance, I can send max, which will send the entire account balance. Once you've entered the amount, you can press continue. And now that we are at the fee selection screen, now Envoy makes this really, really simple. We just have two options. We have a standard option, which estimates that the transaction will be confirmed within one hour. Or we have a boost transaction, which aims to get the transaction processed within the next block, which on average takes place every 10 minutes. So it's up to you how you would like to prioritize your transaction. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to choose standard and then I'm going to press confirm. And Envoy is now displaying a QR encoded version of the unsigned transaction that Passport needs to read and authorize. So on Passport, I'm just going to press sign with QR code. That will open the camera on Passport and I'm just going to quickly scan the QR codes being displayed by Envoy. So Passport's read the QR codes being displayed by Envoy and it's now going to display the transaction details for you as the user to verify. So first of all it's going to show the amount being sent and the destination address. It's then going to show the change amount. It, obviously in this transaction, as I was spending the entire account balance, uh, there is no change. Finally, it's going to show the network fee. And then it's going to ask me if I would like to sign the transaction. Now Passport is showing a QR encoded version of the signed transaction. You can uh, alter the size of the transaction by pressing the left and right buttons on Passport. Now this can be particularly useful if you are using Passport in conjunction with a software wallet on a computer which may have a lower quality webcam that will struggle to pick up the smaller QR codes. So all we need to do now is tap the QR code icon on Envoy which will open the camera and then we just need to scan the QR code being displayed by Passport. And then we go, you can see at the bottom of the screen on Envoy, the transaction has been sent. Finally, I just want to give you guys a brief tour of Envoy, our companion app. You will, of course, have seen some of the functionality throughout the course of this setup guide, but I just wanted to take you through the, some of the finer details just so that you can get the most out of Envoy. First off, we have the Devices tab, which displays all of the devices that you have paired with Envoy. Envoy can pair with as many passports as you have in your possession, and they will all be displayed here. Tapping on the device will show you the details of when it was paired and also the serial number. If you tap the three dots in the top right hand corner, you will be able to either delete the device or edit the device's name. Then I'd like to bring your attention across to the center of the screen at the top. You can see the blue shield. Now this blue shield signifies the private tour connection in Envoy. When it is pulsating, that means that Envoy is trying to establish the connection. And when it is solid, as you can see on screen right now, that means that it has successfully got a connection to the Tor network and that you are ready to transact. If we press the drop down menu from the top left arrow, we can see that we have some sub menus. 
Before I go into them, at the bottom of the screen, you can see our social media icons. So on the left, we've got Twitter. In the middle, we've got GitHub, where you can view the uh, source code for Envoy. And on the right-hand side, that link will take you to our Telegram community. So moving on to the settings menu. From the top, we have the fiat currency setting. We do have seven to choose from, and you can set that to your preference. Next up, you can view amount in sats. So what that will do is change the display from whole bitcoins uh, in within your accounts to individual satoshis. Next up, we have Tor connectivity. As you can see, this is enabled by default. I wouldn't advise you to turn this off unless you have a special requirement to do so. And finally, we have the custom Electrum server. So advanced users may wish to connect Envoy to their own Bitcoin node. If they enable this, they can then and they can edit this field here to enter the credentials from their Electrum server on their own Bitcoin node. Then we have the support link. The top link will take you to our documentation website. The second one will again take you to our Telegram community channel. And the final one will uh, open your default email client so that you can contact us if you re require any assistance in using Passport or Envoy. And finally, we have the about section, which just lists the finer details of the terms of use with Envoy, the privacy policy, and the various open source licenses it uses. Finally, before I move on to the next screen, we have the notifications bell. This is where all of the activity from within your wallet and associated devices will be displayed. So by default, it shows all notifications, but you can of course filter to transactions only, firmware updates, or security publications that the foundation team may publish. One final thing to note is that when any of your devices are due a firmware update, this screen will denote that and you will be able to download the firmware with a single tap. So I'm going to move over to the account screen, which you would have already seen. So any uh, paired accounts will be listed here. Of course, we only have the one at the moment, but again, you can pair as many as you'd like with Envoy. Tapping on the account itself will show the account balance and all of the previous transaction history. And then you can access the send and receive screen, which you've already seen demonstrated in this very video. Tapping the three dots on the top right hand corner will allow you to edit the account name or delete the account in the same way that I've just demonstrated with the device. And then finally, we have the learn page. Within this page, there are two subsections. The first one is the videos. Here is where you'll find uh, all of our tutorial videos on how you can use Passport and Envoy. And these are constantly being added to. So generally, if you have a question about using Passport or Envoy, you're likely to find a video tutorial on it here. And then we have the FAQ tab, which just answers all of our frequently asked questions in relation to Envoy. So feel free to scan through and have a read through those at your leisure. Now keep your eyes peeled on our Telegram community and our announcements channel. We will undoubtedly be expanding the feature set of both Passport and Envoy in the coming months. So keep your eyes out for that. So I hope you found that useful and thank you very much for getting right to the end of the Passport Batch 2 setup tutorial. As always, if you have any questions or queries, you can contact us via our Telegram community channel or if you'd prefer a more private method, you can contact us via email at hello at foundationdevices.com.